What's up, YouTubers? So we got Project Dave on the stand, ready to rock and roll. I ended up getting the oversized bearings and we mix matched and got our clearances now where we want them and they are perfect. They are three thousandths on each main across the entire uh, main bore. So that's good. So we're gonna take these caps back off, get the crank in, and then we're gonna start throwing some pistons in. Stay tuned. <laughs> All right, so we have the crank in, uh, and now we're gonna start putting pistons in. I like to do a uh, first bank, which is one, three, five, seven. Then I flip it and I do two, four, six, eight. Some guys like to do one and two, three and four, and so on. Uh, it's not a big deal, whatever preference you have. I always get everything laid out nice. I use these little oil mats. It's really all I have, um, which works good. It just keeps everything neat. We're using the ARP assembly loop. And that's on all nuts, fasteners. The pistons are already all set up. And I'm gonna show you, we use a um, install cup, which is a 4030 install tapered cup, works the best. This piston's already set up, this is number one. But I'm gonna show you over here. So on number three, I kinda made some marks, and I talked about it earlier. This is where you want all your ring gaps, and there are five technically <clears throat> you have your you have your two wiper gaps and then you have your expander gap which is right there so i have to set these i always like to do it to where um top of the piston is your your oil ring gaps and then your compression gaps are on the sides everyone has different ways of doing it but you got to make sure you do stagger them so then i take my assembly lube i oil the piston in the rings I put it in the cup. I've already pre-oiled the actual cylinder itself, so that's ready. As you can see, there's oil right there. I take the assembly lube, I put it on the wrist pin area, just so it has some assembly lube on it. And then I put it on the bearing, and I just kind of move it around the bearing by hand. Nothing crazy. Uh, once that's ready to go, I don't have any type of guides, so it, it's not that big a deal if, you're, if you take your time. I set my 
crankshaft to bottom dead center. So your journal is all the way down. I take my piston, make sure it's in the right direction. So this side, the pistons have the little dot facing that way. I already marked it number one. The reason is because you have an offset rod. That's the mating side, which goes against the other rod. That is the bevel side, which goes against what they call the fillet of the crank. So on this side, all your offsets on the rods are facing like this with your dot facing towards the front. The other side, the rods are opposite. So nice and easy, we get this set down in there. Try to get it as straight as possible. Always make sure your cup is flush, hold your cup. I use the butt end of the hammer. This is a soft hammer, obviously, and just nice and easy. You can send it with one send, but it's not necessary. So just below the surface of the block, piston's in. That's what's nice about the tapered cup. Nice. So that's that. So then I take my hand and I reach up inside and I guide the rod. All the way down to the journal until it stops. You're not going to hurt anything. And it's on the journal. So now I'll continue to put the cap on. What I like to do is I will finish torque each one, and then once I get the motor all together, I'll flip it back upside down, I, re I recheck all torque on all rods, and I recheck all torque on all mains. Um, and that's just uh, something I've always done, so it's not necessary, but I'm just OCD. So hang tight, I'm gonna put you on uh, time lapse so you guys can follow along.
All right, so <clears throat> um, I talked a little bit about what we were doing while we were doing it. Um, I tell you, the lifesaver is the install cup. They work the best. Um, unfortunately, you have to buy individual size. This one's a 30 thousandths over four inch, so 4030. I have four inch, I have 30, I have 60s. Yeah, yes. And then I got a four and a quarter, which is for like a big block 454. <clears throat> so, um, all the pistons are in. If you've never seen how an engine actually works, um, I'm going to show you real quick. So, if Ricky, you want to so, come up over here to sonar number one. So, on a yeah, Chevy, so sonar, sonar number, number one is one. here. So, I'm going to show you. So, this would be top dead center. That is all the way to the top. Yes. And we're, we're going to check that. We're going to check our deck clearance. I have a tool to do that. Uh, and we're also going to degree the camshaft, but that'll be another video. This video, I wanted to get the short block together and show you guys. How it happens so I'll see like but as you're going up and down you notice how all the pistons, the pistons are, are in different movements but now i'm going to show you something pretty cool watch ready so when number one is up on a small block chevy oh that's like here. steps and stuff what other one's up uh number six all right so now watch this the firing order of a small block chevy is one eight one eight yeah huh? Now look at the other piston. There's always two pistons that are up at the same time. One, eight, on and a five. Well, no, that's just the other piston that's up. Oh. So this one is now on an exhaust stroke when this one over here is on compression stroke. That's why they're both at the top because it's a four-stroke engine. You have your intake. Yeah. Compression. Yeah. Power. Exhaust. So it's suck, bang, <laughs> blow, or whatever they call suck, it. Yeah. Suck, bang, blow. <laughs> so you have four strokes. So... Your small block Chevy is one eight, and then watch one eight four. Four is up. One, one eight, eight four. Four. And then three. Three. And then six. six and then five. And then five. Seven. Look how it's coming, seven. chasing it. Seven. And then the final cylinder on the firing order is two. 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 See? So, pretty cool, right? Yeah. So, we're going to check all torque, uh, and then we'll throw the camshaft in. But that's going to be another video. So, we got the short together. Technically, this is your rotating assembly short block. Um, we need to put the camshaft in. That's a very simple pr process. But then we're going to degree the cam, and I'm going to actually make a whole video of degreeing cam. So, if you've never degreed a cam, click your notifications. Um, please share, subscribe, tell a friend. No, um, I gotta do it. What? Oh, you gotta do it. So. Oh, no, no, no. We're gonna, hold on. All right, so it's the end of the video. What do we normally say there, uh, Squints? Uh. So what do we say? Like, pop out. Um, subscribe, and click the notification bell. Button. The button or whatever. Oh. Um, bing bong. And then, uh, and then don't forget to comment on your typewriter. Oh, okay. We also want to give a shout out. We had uh, one of our listeners comment, uh, one of our followers, subscribers commented, um, nobody does it better 214. And I think they're out of Australia. So that's kind of cool, right? Yeah, they wanted a shout out on the video. So we want to give them a shout out. And also, thanks to everybody that's subscribing. We have almost 1300 subscribers now. What? Yeah, pretty cool, huh? And uh, so yeah, we're uh, happy about that. So thank you very much for watching the videos. So this is our 355 Project Dave short block is now assembled. It will be cam degree. So you understand how we degree a camshaft and why we degree a camshaft. And then we'll go from there. Stay tuned, right? Squints. Nice hair. <laughs> Eww.